Hi, in this video we're going to take a, a look at the options available to you under the Insert menu in Google Sheets. So let's get started. On first look you'll notice that the first options have to do with inserting rows and columns and shifting data. Um, so that's going to be dependent on where you're clicked. Right now I'm clicked in cell A1, so let me change that. Now I'm in E5. So now when I insert a row above, the row goes above the fifth row. If I were to insert a column to the left, the column would go to the left of what was E and is now F. Okay, so I just undid those, but those are those are fairly simple. Now I can also say in, uh, shift data down, and you'll notice I was selected here, so it took everything in that column and pushed it down. So uh, that was really a mistake because things don't line up correctly. It's not something I tend to use, but I guess if you're bringing data in from uh, other sources and you need to align it, I, w I would just rather copy and paste or cut and paste, but those options are there for you um, under the Insert menu to move your data around a little bit. Just be careful with them. Let me undo that. Okay, you also have the option here to insert a new sheet. Now the alternate way to insert a new sheet is to use the plus in the lower left hand corner of the page, but if you want to use the menu you can say insert new sheet and there it is. Sheet 3. Different options you can do with sheets once they're created is you can duplicate them. Okay, that's going to be handy especially if I maybe had data and I wanted to reproduce a piece of that data. So let me take the World Cup here and just say duplicate and you can see it now I have copy of World Cup and it's exactly the same. Um, you can delete a sheet. You can copy it to another environment. You can rename it. So this says sheet 3. Not really much more useful in that name. You can change the color of the sheet, which is a nice option um, to organize yourself. You can hide it, view comments, or you can move it around, though you can also just drag it back and forth. Okay, let's see what else we can insert. You can, let me come back to World Cup here. You can insert a comment. So let's just say that um, you notice this comment is also located here and actually some of these features, these are also insert features like hyperlink which we'll look at in a minute, comment and chart. So alternate place to get some of the things we're going to look at today. Let me just come up to addition here and I can say I'm going to insert a comment. Now comments can be very useful. You'll notice it it only appears when I click on that cell. And it's marked by this little red triangle that we'll call it up. And this is a great feature to use if multiple people are working on a spreadsheet and you want to comment back and forth on that. Um, you can put more extensive things in a comment. We're going to look at a note in a minute. And once you do have a comment, it works like all the other comments. You can resolve it. Um, you can edit it, you can delete it, or you can create a link to the comment. So these are the same things that you would do in um, docs or sheets. You can also insert something called a note. So let me put that under, I'll just select this cell. Remember comments and notes are associated with particular cells that you've selected. Okay, and you notice they look a little different. They look more like what comments would be in Excel. Um, and it's just a way to pass information to your users or to leave notes for yourself. So um, comments generally more extensive and it's more of an environment, in, in a collaborative environment to trade information back and forth. And notes are just that, ways to leave notes related to certain data for either yourself or your user. Okay, there's also insert function, and you can see that the common functions of sum, average, count, min, and max um, are listed here, but if you need more, you simply click on more, and what that's going to bring you to is not really a way to insert a function, 
but a complete list of the of the spreadsheet functions available to you. So you can see it's quite extensive. These are all the pre-built formulas. They're sorted by uh, category, then the function itself, then it gives you in the third column um, the syntax that you would use, and then some additional a link to additional information. So you can search this. So I'm going to search for sign, uh, and there it is. So you can see that I wanted to sign and then uh, put the data in there. And that's how I want to build that formula. If you actually want to build a formula yourself, what you're going to do is you're going to put an equal sign and add the formula itself as I did here. Oh, let me escape that for a second. This was just an average. So this will allow you to insert simple formulas and to get information on additional formulas or functions. Okay, other things that you can insert. Let's take the first, say, 10 World Cups. And what I'd like to do is I like to compare how many matches were involved. So I'm going to try to skip over a lot of this data and hold down the control key and that will allow me to select non-adjacent data skipping the other columns and now I can insert that chart again I could have done the same thing right here you're gonna to have to pick the type of chart that you want so I would like a, a standard column chart and there you go now first thing I notice is is that the um, the length of these are not that appropriate for my label. I'm losing a lot of information. It's a relatively small chart. So if I want to, let's insert it. Let's say that I do that and find this mistake later. And I want to go back and I want to edit this chart. Under this little arrow, you can go to advanced edit and that will bring you back to this window. Recommendations is actually the selection field. So I'm going to click and you can see that there's two non-adjacent pieces of data selected and I can basically just get in there and I'm just going to take the host country this time it's the same basic information without um, without some of the text okay now um, we still have some issues um, in that it doesn't fit let's see how it fits when we produce it here I can increase the size of the chart. That's going to help me a little bit. Um, there's still some issues there. So let's see what else we can do. There we go. Advanced edit. Um, if you go to chart types, you can see that you did have some options here to switch rows and columns. Um, to use a particular column or row as header information. You can switch up the type of graph and you can see that there's some interesting graphs located down there. But I want to go to customization right now. I want to give this a title. Um, matches. And I could take this, and right now it's bold, but it doesn't have to be. I could italicize it, of course. I could change the font size. Maybe 16 is not quite big enough for me, and I could change the color here. So I could do some basic adjustments to the title. Now, it's got a legend here that's not really helping me very much. So I'm going to, I could move it. I could put it at the bottom, the top, etc. But I'm just going to say none and get rid of it. Um, if I wanted these actually reversed in order, I could do that couple of different options in here maximize the size of it and that might work for me it's it's getting uh, moving the labels up but at least they're not on top of each other let's uh, say for a second that that's not what I want there's a horizontal axis on the bottom I can give it a title I can say whoop. Okay, and I can do some basic formatting with that, as you'd expect. 
now here, because these are along the bottom, I can take the label, I can slant them. And that's really what's going to work for me in this particular uh, graph so that the text is, is readable. Okay, I also have um, the left axis over here. And I can change, well, I can change the colors of my bars here. I can move the axis from the left to the right. I can add value labels. So a variety of different things that I can I can do here to uh, change up and spruce up my spruce up my graph a little bit or my chart. And let me bring that down in size a little bit again. Okay, so certainly you don't have the the range of formatting options that you would have in Excel, but you you can produce a good uh, useful graph. Okay, you can also insert an image. Now, when you do insert an image, I'm just going to go to my Google Drive here and, and pick a uh, an unrelated image. Notice that the image, when it comes in, is great. It's in your spreadsheet, but it's not really associated with a particular cell, per se. It just kind of free floats. Uh, let's take a hyperlink here. I'm going to go to Brazil, uh, Brazil, I'll say soccer, perhaps I should be saying football, and I'll just grab that link, and now I can insert a link, because I was selected on the cell, it picked that up as the text for the link. And now that's a hyperlink that will take me to that Wikipedia site on uh, Brazilian football. Okay, uh, insert form. This is something, honestly, I don't use very much. I, I think there are easier ways to do it. But if you were to insert a form, it would create a Google form associated with a uh, sheet and link to the sheet. Um, if I come back, you're going to notice that there's a form right here, but it's only got that first question. And I mean, as you build out the questions, it'll uh, it'll build them out here because they're linked. But I think it's probably easier to create that Google form first in most cases and use that to create the sheet as opposed to vice versa. Vice versa. Now, if I do try to delete this, I'm going to have a problem. It's going to say because it's linked to that form. I can't delete it. So I would have to come to the form responses, unlink the sheet. At which point I could delete it here. Of course, it still exists in your drive, so you would have to go in there again and actually delete the form to keep your space tidy. Okay, so as I said, that seems to me more uh, trouble than it's worth. And the last thing that you can insert in here is a drawing. We've looked at drawing tools with uh, Google Docs, so we're not going to do them extensively here. But this is a drawing space, which is great. And when you save it, it's simply going to put it, again, free-floating in your sheet. It's not going to be associated with a particular cell. And those are really the different options that you have for inserting things into a Google Sheet.